Welcome to WAC Basketball Preview Day here in Denver, Colorado. I'm Rachel Vigil, and alongside me is J.C. Hoyt, the women's basketball head coach at Kansas City. Coach, you're starting with us nice and early. Yeah, I know. You guys got me up early, yeah. like <clears throat> clearing my throat for you guys. I know. Practice started a couple weeks ago. How's it been going so far? Practice has been great. Um, just, uh, you know, a, a new energy, new players, new team, new season, um, but really loving what we've got going so far. Is your mantra for the season still uncommon? It is, yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to go away from that. Can you kind of ex explain what it means? Yeah, so uncommon for us is just, um, you know, we talk about um, – Everyone in college athletics always wants the same thing. They all they all want championships. They all, um, you know, want to win games and and do those types of things. But in order to do that, you have to do things that other people aren't willing to do, and um, that is just being uncommon, whether it's on the court or off the court. And uh, our players have really bought into it, so it's been good to us. And you guys had the best record in eight years last season. How do you keep the momentum going? You know, we don't we don't really change anything from what we've been doing. We talk about um, just focusing on the process and getting one percent better mm -hmm. each and every day. Um, we talk a lot just about our standards, and our standards are just being the best that we can be every day. Best the best we can be um, as individuals, the best that we can be as a collective team. And we feel like if we put our absolute best effort forward each day, then good things are going to happen come season. And you got a contract extension. Congratulations on that. What is it like to know the university truly believes in what you're doing? It's everything. I mean, our our uh, leadership, uh, Dr. Brandon Martin, has been phenomenal and just really transforming um, the athletic department as a whole, um, really investing in the basketball programs. And that feels really great to be a part of something um, always bigger than, than myself. Um, but of course, like you said, it just it feels really great to have that support. Erica Mattingly is returning. What are you kind of hoping to see out of her this season? You know, Erica, uh, I, I know what I'm going to get from her each and every day, and that's just the will to win. She hates to lose. She loves to win. Um, hates to lose more than she loves to win. Um, but the thing I'm most excited about Erica is really um, just the fact that she's not going to have the same type of pressure on her that she had last season. Um, and that's just due to um, the returners that we have improving their game and, and really um, investing in themselves to take some pressure off Erica. Uh, some of the, the newcomers that we have um, that will be a part of our team this year, I think are, are weapons that are going to take some pressure off of her. So I'm excited to just kind of free Erica up a little bit. And uh, I know she's still going to do her thing. She's, she's going to do whatever it takes to help our team win. Um, but I don't think it's going to look the same as it did last year. Do you guys kind of practice for double teams against her? <laughs> we did. We did last year. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it really challenged me as a coach because I had to um, quickly learn uh, how to deal with that, you know, double teams and, and a box and one and, and face guarding and all those types of things. It, it really challenged me as a coach. And I'm so thankful for the way that it helped me grow. Um, but uh, like I said, I, we've got some more weapons this year, so I don't think it's going to quite look the same. You have Mizzou and K-State on the schedule. How do those challenges help you guys as a team? Uh, the the um, opportunity to have those types of teams on our schedule the last couple years, uh, we have felt have really, really paid off um, just by, by battle testing us early. Um, you know, we played Mizzou to seven points last year and, and they were a top 25 team all year. And so what that did for us was it just gave us confidence, um, but it also um, showed us just how hard you have to fight and claw to um, to win games and just to be competitive in those types of games. Very true. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the dress situation that happened a couple months ago, uh, good and bad. But what would you say the message you wanted to be heard was? There's a lot of messages with that. Um, you know, the, the first thing um, I think is uh, just to be kind. And I think a lot of people hide behind the platforms of social media or a computer screen. And uh, it's really easy to say some things behind a, a screen that you wouldn't say to other people's face. Um, and so my message would just be to to be kind to other people. And, um, but also to know that uh, anytime you have any type of success or, or any type of platform, uh, not everyone is gonna agree with you and that's okay. Um, I actually ended up wearing that dress to our camps this summer and uh, it was, probably my favorite camp that I've ever been a part of just because I got to talk to those little girls about um, 
you know, things that are so much bigger than basketball. Uh, we talked a lot about just embracing um, what it means to be a female and um, all the the positive attributes that, that females bring to the table. And um, that just because you're female doesn't mean that you can't, you know, be competitive and, and feisty and bold and courageous, uh, just like the guys. Um, but also that you just have to be authentic to yourself. So if that means wearing a dress, if that means wearing makeup, if that means hating makeup, that's okay. You know, just being true to, to yourself and um, just empowering those little girls to go out and do what they want to do and, and be great at it and not let anyone stop them from that. And be whoever they want to be, right? Exactly. And I know you went to the Coaches vs. Cancer fundraiser, I believe, and you were the only women's basketball head coach there. Mm. What was it like to represent women's basketball? <sighs> um... That was probably one of the most impactful things that I've ever been a part of, honestly. Again, it was just bigger than the game. Uh, cancer is one of those nasty things that, um, you know, has unfortunately probably touched all of our lives. And um, to be able to um, get up there and, and um, again, kind of hang with the guys and, and represent the females, that meant a lot. Um, just because it's it, cancer does not discriminate. It's, you know, it goes after everyone. And um, I had a little uh, cancer champion named Sophia that um, just stole my heart. And uh, she's going to be, I think, a part of our team for a really long time. Um, but just to, to get up there and um, not, it, it wasn't even about being the only female coach. It was just about the um, the cause that we were all fighting for to raise awareness and, and raise funds to, to help fight that. And um, like I said, it's probably been um, the one of the, the most special and impactful things I've ever been a part of. Well, I'm so glad to hear that. But I'm now going to open up the questions to the media. Sorry, I'm late. I just walked in. Um, I'm Kyle McDonald. I run the WAC Hoops Digest. Uh, it's a new website um, basically about the WAC. Uh, I was just wondering what your thoughts are on the extension you signed in September. I don't know if you answered that already, but um, just kind of your thoughts there. And I have another question about the dress uh, with, with that once you're done answering that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, the extension is just, um, I think, first of all, it's um, a byproduct of all the hard work that my team has put in um, the belief that they have into what our coaching staff has been preaching to them. Um, it's a testament to the hard work that my coaching staff has put in. Um, and of, of course, it feels great to have that support. I love Kansas City. I, it's my favorite place I've ever lived. Um, and I want to do things there that no one has ever done. And so do our players. And so to have that kind of cushion and, and that support, um, that means a lot to us. About the dress, considering who it was that tweeted the negativity out about it, will you be wearing that dress when you guys go to Las Cruces <laughs> this year? That's a great question. Um, I kind of like surprises, so I'm just going to keep everyone on the, the edge of their seat and tell you, you have to watch the game if you want to know that answer. So tune in. Uh, Kansas City plays in the preseason WNIT this season. Uh, first games out at Pacific and Stockton, California. What does an invitation uh, like that mean to your program? I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. It means a lot to us. Um, I think it's, uh, again, it's a huge testament to the hard work that our players and uh, our coaches have put in and um, to feel like our hard work is paying off and being recognized um, on that type of platform, on that type of stage. That means a lot to us. Um, it's been a great off-season um, motivator for our players because we know that we're going to be battle-tested right off the bat. Um, it also means a lot for our athletic department, honestly, just to, um, again, have that recognition. And um, I can't wait to, to see, you know, just to um, expose our players to that kind of postseason feel, that tournament feel. And um, I think it's, uh, it's been great for our recruiting. It's been great really just on, on every level for us. So we're excited for that. Coach, you finished in the top 25 in the NCAA in scoring last season. Can we accept, expect that same up-tempo offense this year? Yeah, I think as long as I'm a head coach, that's what you're going to see from my teams. That's just um, who I am at my, at my core. Uh, we recruit players who want to play fast and get up and down and score a lot of points. Um, 
I think that our players right now are regretting that a little bit because they are understanding how much conditioning you have to put in um, in order to play that that up-tempo style. But um, I think it's fun for our fans. It's fun for our players. It's fun to coach. So um, absolutely, we're, we're not going to go away from that. You talked a little about her earlier, but Erica Mattingly was named the preseason player of the year by the media. Can you just talk about what that means um, for her and then also for your program? Yeah, um, I mean, Erica's a special player. She's as special as any player I've ever coached. I mean, shoot, I get emotional talking about her um, just because of what she's done for our program. Um, I've known Erica since she was in high school. Uh, you know, being from Kansas, I, I watched her her um, grow up and um, in fact her mom sent me a, a picture of uh, my mom who coaches high school basketball uh, she got named uh, coach of the year and Erica was um, on the all-state team and a picture of those two together so I, I somewhat feel like I've grown up with Erica a little bit and to see all of her hard work pay off and knowing how hard she works knowing how competitive she is and and the dues that she's paid um, it means a lot for, for all of us. Um, but the, the really, really special thing about Erica, and I mentioned this before, is just her competitive spirit, just her will to win. And um, I know that, uh, you know, of course it feels good to have that recognition, but we all know that that doesn't mean anything um, until we've played out the season and, and see what happens. And um, Erica, I know, would um, any day of the week pick a win over, you know, any type of stat line. And um, that's really what we're focused on is just having the best season as a team possible. All right, I think one last question here. Uh, the season looks to be very open in the whack in terms of who could come out on top. Uh, what's it going to take to get to the top? A lot of hard work. Uh, I think that this conference is, its you're right, it's wide open. It's so competitive. Uh, any team on any given night can uh, have a, a great game. And um, I just think it's hard to win games, period. I, I love sports. I watch sports of all different kinds. And um, of course, I'm a Chiefs fan. You know, everyone thinks the Chiefs are going to go undefeated. And then all of a sudden, they get beat on Sunday. And um, the bottom line is, it's really hard to win games. It's hard to win games when you're playing against great players, the great coaches that we have in this conference. So we really try to not focus on, on the wins or the losses, but just rather the process of getting better every day. And, and we think if we do that, then hopefully, you know, the byproduct is a great season. But it's, it's a great conference to be a part of. And um, I think also that we got to see that in the uh, the conference tournament last year. You know, the both semifinal games and the the final game went to overtime. So I think that's again just a testament to how competitive our conference is. Alrighty, thank you guys and JC. Thank you again for coming down and spending your morning with me for just a little bit in the media as well. Uh, next up, we have UTRGV's Lou Hill. We'll be right back.